Gazelle Hashimian is an extraordinary entrepreneur who has started and managed several award-winning companies. In addition, she is the founder of Blue Flower, a wellness company specializing in 100% pure, premium, and therapeutic quality essential oils. The Achieving Optimal Health Conference is thrilled to have Gazelle with us this year, sharing her personal health journey and how the incorporation of essential oils aided her in achieving good health and inspired her to start a new business. Please welcome Gazelle Hashemian. My name is Gazelle Hashemian, and it's definitely an honor to be here today. I really appreciate the BBNR ladies um, for their invitation and uh, uh, their request for me to be here today. Um, although I must say, Chris was definitely a hard act to follow. Um, hopefully, you'll, um, you'll find my slides, which are basically a series of pictures of me at different age, um, as, as, as informative as Chris's. If someone had told me four years ago that I'd be fascinated with the world of wellness and natural remedies, and I would, be, I would have launched a new company by 2016, I thought they would be mad and out of their mind. Uh, this definitely is something that I stumbled upon, which I, I will share my story with you in a few minutes. And um, I could not be any happier. So in order to tell you a little bit about the transformation and the experience that I have um, experienced and um, have gone through in the last couple of years, I have to tell you a little bit about me and where I come from, um, and also the background that, I've, uh, that I'm going to share with you. This also is extremely different from most of my presentations during my career, either at a tele as a telecom executive or as a, as a technologist and a, and a business owner. Most of my presentations have very complicated charts, where I try to meet with prospective clients and tell them how our company can help them with proven methodologies, best-in-class best um, practices. And we would be telling them, giving them technical approach on implementation of a new CRM, a pro project and program management office. They can do more with less. They can automate their business processes. And um, last but not least, the favorite word today um, in the world of technology is data analytics. How can they turn their data into information? So, um, and you're, as you can see, this is extremely different. When Dora Treasure and Therese asked me to speak about my experience, they, um, they requested that I talk about me. And then they neglected to say that I only have 20 minutes. <laughs> So hopefully I can squeeze in as much as information as I can into it. I was born in northern Iran, a few miles from southern shores of Caspian Sea, and um, a few miles from the highest peak uh, in, in, in Iran, Damavand, which is the second peak in Asia standing at 18,000 feet, uh, right after Mount Everest. My relatively happy childhood <laughs> uh, came to um, a pivotal point and a uh, major interruption by the 1979 Iranian Revolution, as everyone's experience in that country, or at least 99.9% .9 of people, were impacted by the stress and um, um, the change of life, lifestyle. My life as I knew it came to an end, and a new beginning had started. Uh, the six years that I stayed after in that country, I, I witnessed um, a, a lot of um, hardship around me, from Iraqis warfighters bombing Tehran to long lines in, um, for oil and food and, and gas to, um, Stress, uh, witnessing my family's change of uh, lifestyles, my father having to step down from his job uh, because he was, a, he was an official with the Shah's government. 
um, a lot of some of his friends were executed or killed. So something that uh, today for our children in this day and age would be traumatizing. And uh, I talk about that because it definitely impacted me and it, de it definitely impacted the, uh, the life I had. So I was no longer, although my family and my close friends uh, were fortunate, uh, I was fortunate enough to have them and, and continue to get their, um, their love and affection and get my emotional support from there. My life as I knew it changed a lot. So I was no longer this happy child. Um, I, I went back and forth about um, including some pictures during that six years that, that I lived under the tyranny of the mullahs, and I decided against it just because you've all seen plenty of it on, on the news, and we are talking about wellness after all. So we're going to skip that. What happened to me in 1985 was another pivotal point in, in my life, which is um, getting an opportunity to move to the States. I call that summer, summer of promises in my life. Uh, where two promises were made on my behalf. So my, my parents and I, uh, we went to Turkey, Ankara, Turkey, because, as you know, there, there were no Iranian embassies uh, in Iran anymore, or I'm sorry, American embassies in Iran anymore. Uh, we, went to, we went to Turkey to get, to get a visa, and the, con the American consulate asked my father, are you going to leave her there? And he said, no. And the consulate said, um, do you promise? And he said yes. Um, to, his, to my late father's defense, there was not a plan for me to stay in the States. When we landed in the um, in US, I refused to go back. And my mother, who is sitting right here, and I appreciate her uh, support and love throughout the years, uh, she did not. She said, you know, all my kids are in the U.S. I, I, you know, my daughters are in the U.S. I can't, I can't leave her. You know, she's my youngest. I had her because she was going to be my companion forever. And, <laughs> and I, um, uh, I asked her. I, I took her aside. I was 15. And I said, don't be selfish. This is what I want to do. And she agreed. So then my brother-in-law, took me to T.C. Williams High School, where, where we met with a guidance counselor requesting for my visa status to be changed to a student visa. And he made another promise on my, on my behalf. He told Mr. McClure of the guidance counselor at T.C. Williams High School that if he helps me, he would promise that I would be a positive and contributing member of society for this country, and I would make everyone proud. So looking back at that summer, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the two promises that, I, that were made on my behalf. And I'm grateful that uh, one was broken, and hopefully the other one was kept. <laughs> this is my first job. The summer after um, I, uh, so I started T.C. Williams High School as a sophomore, the summer, that, uh, the summer after that, everyone had jobs except me. And we weren't of financial means. Um, to, to have ex um, uh, fantastic ex excursions and, and sleepaway camps. Um, so I went out and got a job. And again, to my parents' dismay, because no 16-year-old should be working with the culture that they're from, I, I started a job as, and started taking orders on uh, Domino's Pizza in Alexandria, Virginia. And I had a blast. I really had a blast. I uh, definitely... Um, started my endeavor, my high school endeavor at T.C. Williams High School, uh, not being extremely familiar with the American culture, although I had watched Greece, and I, <laughs> <laughs> and I knew every move to Michael Jackson's thriller, believe me. Um, I made the best of it. I made the best of it. And for me, America was, was the, and it still is, the beacon of hope that everyone outside of this country yearns for. And as Bono says, America is not just a country and is an idea. And I have lived, I've been living proof that um, it is. And, and when people are assimilated and are welcome, they make the best of it and they go out of their way to make not only themselves proud, but also this great country. Um, I always talk about it. I, I talk. <laughs> So 
So I tell my kids, uh, what my husband and I tell my kids all the time is that there's something so American about pride in legacy and heritage. It is powerful and it's inspiring. And I think it's something that all of us should, should inspire and continue to emphasize on. So this is me in high school, T.C. Williams High School. Second year, right after I had started um, uh, working at Domino's, I realized I, I attended every club. I, as I'm telling you, I made the best of it. I attended every club, and I realized that there were not too many clubs that um, um, I kind of would fit in. I tried to order uh, a tennis jacket. This is one of my favorite stories. Um, although I wasn't on the varsity team, I went to the bookstore at T.C. Williams High School, and I said, I really want one of these leather tennis jackets. And at that time, again, to my disappointment, they told me I had to earn it. Um, so I said, forget this. I went back to my guidance counselor, and I said, I'm going to order, uh, I'm going to start a club. We're going to name it the Cosmopolitan Club. And a lot of people, the response was fantastic. A lot of people joined the club thinking it was a fashion club, whereas um, our purpose was, to, <laughs> was really for foreign students to get educated and, and become um, again, assimilated, get assimilated faster in a very diverse um, high school. And if, if you're familiar with Alexandria, uh, T.C. Williams High School had at that time, and I believe it still does, about 2,500 students with um, a lot of different um, racial, demographics, and socioeconomics um, students and families. So I started the Cosmopolitan Club in, in an effort to educate and bring the entire community together. But basically, we just had fun. We had parties, um, Halloween parties. That's me with uh, two exchange students. Um, I, we organized, my friends and I organized excursions, college tours within Virginia. And, and again, we had a blast. At the tail end of my senior year, at uh, T.C. Williams High School, I met my husband. And who should be here today? Where is he? <laughs> he, he does have a habit of being late from time to time. <laughs> 27 years, haven't fixed that. We, <laughs> we were both in school. We decided to get married. We fell in love, and we, we shared many ideas. And, and, the, and I always um, tell people that we grew up together, and we're growing old together. We, um, uh, while we're very different, he is a lot more of an introvert, and as you can tell, I'm a lot more uh, outgoing. But we, also, we shared a lot of similar values. We um, both had extremely high emphasis on education. And we were always so proud. We never asked any of our families for any money. Both of us worked and went to school. He moved on to um, receive his doctorate in computer science, and I master's in electrical engineering. And that's our family today. We're proud parents of two teenagers, most days, Alexander and Tara. <laughs> um, and in about 2001, we started, um, I started working with him. While I was bed rested uh, with my pregnancy with Tara, uh, our daughter, um, I joined his then newly found company, Paragon Technology Group. Um, I thought that it would be a short-term project, me helping him out on part-time basis and then continue on with my telecom career. And, um, um, and I honestly thought that um, he wouldn't survive me working with him. It was just, I had a bit major rule against uh, spouses working with each other. But it worked out. And 11 years later, we had three offices nationally, and we had about 240 employees nationwide. We focused on providing IT and technology services to the public and private sector. And by 2012, we were... Um, at about 85% of prime government contract work um, in, in major departmental offices. And we continue to give back to the community um, throughout building our family, raising our kids. 
uh, focusing on our business, we continue to stay involved as we are today uh, with our alma mater, George Washington University, um, and helping humanitarian organizations and partnering with organizations such as Relief International, NIH Children's Inn, and St. Jude Hospital supporting them. Uh, we have uh, continued on to, to ensure that we give back to the community, and then that's me giving the commencement speech at the School of Engineering a few years ago. So my teammate, Kat, who's here today, thought that um, this picture should be included because it's one of my headshots for my former company. Um, because um, it has an underlying uh, lining tone of stress and seriousness. And I wanted to use this for blue flower, and she said, no, 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 you're, you're in a lifestyle mode right now. You should be in a, in a lot uh, more relaxing and more um, welcoming um, pose. And I, I agreed to put that here to focus on the cost, the cost of what it uh, m meant to be me and what um, the toll that it took on me. Um, don't get me wrong, my family and I are grateful for all the opportunities that we've been given. We are grateful for our success and count our blessings every day. But this success had a cost associated to it. There was minimal mindfulness in, in my daily life, and my motto at work was, I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> and that definitely took a toll on me. So, the work-life balance, raising two kids, making sure that I read for them every night, and when they went back to school, they went to bed, I would stay up till about 2 a.m. working on proposals or project deliverables for our clients. Um, uh, now, I'm a huge advocate of leaning in, opting in, and being a working mother, a working um, and, and contributing member of society. But I think there is also, what my life lacked was a certain element of selfishness. There would be weeks where I wouldn't exercise, um, and as Kristen said, in our 20s, I actually, my team members had a bit going on if I could finish an entire pizza by myself, which I did. Unfortunately, I can still today, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't. <laughs> um, so uh, with the stress, GI issues and congestion, um, lack of sleep, having interrupted sleep, um, when late, in late 2011, we were in due diligence of selling, selling our company, Paragon Technology Group, a friend of mine made an observation. Uh, she said, Gizel, I'm used to you during a stressful times having one of your eyes twitch. I know now you must be under a lot of pressure because both of your eyes are twitching. So it goes back to the whole body, mind, spirit, well-being, and lack of it in my life. And that's when I started my path to wellness. In January 2012, we had sold our company, and um, the major reason for it was exhaustion. And, and my husband and I decided to recuperate and rejuvenate. When I looked up the true definition of well-being, um, so well -being, uh, wellness, according to World Health Organization, is an active process of becoming aware and making choices towards a healthy and fulfilling life. It's, it is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, and not just merely absence of disease. When I launched Blue Flower almost a year ago, I took inspiration from what my life lacked, the internal well-being, uh, wellness, and ensuring that the external wellness continues to stay on, and also best practices that are available out there. And uh, we came up with the six pillars of wellness that works for Blue Flower. Again, focusing on physical, emotional, spiritual, more on the self, 
and when it comes to intellectual, social, and environmental, it's more outward. And my path to wellness started. I started, I did decrease the number of slices of pizzas that I took. I started eating healthier. We started traveling with our kids because you know, having regular vacations was not really a priority for us prior to that. We just wanted to make sure we spent quality time with the kids and um, did our jobs. And most of our vacations were working vacations. And um, I stumbled upon aromatherapy which is something I would have never, ever considered. Being of Persian descent, we all grew up with eucalyptus and steam cup, and I remember vividly when I had high fever, right around the time I was, I believe, nine or 10, and most of you have seen Michael Phelps' uh, scars from cupping. My parents tried to do cupping on me, and I literally screamed them away, accusing them of witchcraft and telling them that this doesn't make sense and they belong, uh, they're antiquated and they belong in museums. And I was only nine. <laughs> um, but now I actually may consider it now that, um, that I have found this new love and passion of working with nature and, and some uh, ancient therapies and remedies. Aromatherapy is defined as um, extracting and utilizing aromatic ess essences from plants to balance and harmonize <coughs> your body and your life. And that's according to National Association of Holistic Aromatherapy. Uh, they do believe that um, using aromatic uh, essences your physiological, psychological, and spiritual uh, quality of life is harmonized and is enhanced. <coughs> I started um, doing some research with aromatherapy and, and the background that it has uh, and some history that's behind it because, again, let's not forget, I am an engineer at heart. So the history goes back to about 5000 BC. It started with Egyptians, at least it is said and, and documented that they started it, and they started it with the mummification process, where they used cinnamon, frankincense, um, juni and, and juniper in um, the mummification process. The Romans. Um, took advantage of Egyptians' experience after they, their invasion of Egypt. And um, according to Hippocrates, um, he maintained that key to good health and good living is a daily aromatic bath and uh, scented massage. In 11th century, Avicenna um, invented the cold distillation process, where he started, uh, he invented the, uh, the effort where a refrigerated coil helps extract essence from the plants. And that's when the rose essence started becoming um, uh, more and more popular and its benefits. The term aromatherapy was not coined till 1937. So I started my path to aromatherapy. Uh, reluctantly, I may add, about uh, over a year ago. I was introduced to it uh, by a few of my friends that they were raving about their ther its therapeutic benefits. And um, the first or second time around, I rolled my eyes on the inside. Um, and, and after a friend of mine told me about her experience and her family's experience with aromatherapy, I said, what the heck, I've tried everything else. Um, I'll give this a shot as well. And before I tell you um, about the experience, I may add that um, aromatherapy, as defined by FDA, is under, falls under cosmetics. So uh, there are no claims that can be made scientifically under the regulatory um, organizations of uh, FDA. I am not making any medical claim. I'm just sharing about my experience with you. And um, we do reference all the websites and research that's necessary for any small therapeutic benefit that we reference 
on our website. Um, so you, um, just that's the disclaimer out there. Uh, National Cancer Institute has a website that refers to aromatherapy and its benefits in reducing anxiety and stress for its cancer patients. Uh, they also reference laboratory and animal studies that have shown that certain essential oils have antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, calming, or <coughs> soothing benefits. You can find that website on our website. Um, over a year ago, my friends gave me a few blends. Um, I bought a few blends and a few essential oils, um, and uh, she gave me her instruction as far as you know what she was doing, um, and I followed. I figured there's no harm. And the moment that I put those very two drops on my palm and I started rubbing my stomach for my indi indigestion issues, that's when I thought I had completely gone mad. Um, and, but I was pleasantly surprised that it worked for me. And that's when I started looking into it further and further as far as what other benefits I can take from this. It is uh, known that olfactory senses were developed thousands of years, if not millions, before humans' frontal lobe uh, senses were, were complete during the evolutionary process. And some scientists, and again, I, I definitely am not as um, um, scientifically aware or educated as Chris is, but some scientists um, believe that those olfactory senses and the fact that they have been embedded in our, in our um, body for so long deliver the, the benefits of aromatherapy and a strong sense of smell. Most of us you know, open a can of pickle after a few years, and if you haven't had that jar of food since you were five and you smell it, and all of a sudden you have flashbacks. And that's the strength of olfactory senses. I am not sure what I did. Oh, OK. So um, some of the oils that I find extremely helpful uh, with my GI issues are as follows. Ginger is said to may possibly support healthy digestion. There is, again, no fact, no scientific um, and clinical testing that has been done that says it actually does. So we're allowed to say that it may support healthy digestion. It may also decrease bloating, gassing, indigestion, and nausea. Peppermint, which is another favorite of mine, is an uplifting uh, oil. Uh, it also is said to uh, may support a healthy digestion. Um, as is caraway, coriander, tarragon, and anise. Um, most of us are used to um, being advised by a local pharmacist about eucalyptus, or have taken eucalyptus steam baths or showers. Uh, it, uh, eucalyptus, melaleuca, lemon, and oregano may support clear respiratory airways, and also there, they are lemon and oregano may support a healthy immune function. For calming effect, most of us are familiar with lavender. And actually, a few of you asked us about it this morning at our booth. Um, different blends that are put together and uniquely developed by aromatherapists and scientists deliver the maximum effect of aromatherapy. That is to be used topically. Um, some, of the, some of my favorites are chamomile, lavender, ylang ylang, marjoram, sandalwood, and vanilla. I call ylang ylang my happy oil. Not everybody likes the smell. These are all allergens. Some people can't even stand being around oils. I had one person this morning, as I put some ylang ylang and bergamot on my uh, hand and walking down, he said, oh, this is going to give me a headache. And it may. Um, so um, just, just watch out um, and test it. Before you, before you decide to try it um, or purchase one. So that is how Blue Flower came about. I, um, 
Notice that most of the premium essential oil providers require the pyramid model. You have to commit to monthly minimums and then you have to become a member. And uh, it wasn't just easy to work with. And as a, as a uh, working mother on the go, I don't need another membership to, to worry about. Um, so that was one of the reasons. And also my fascination with the world of aromatherapy, becoming more and more fascina fas fascinated by it. So I started this endeavor of launching a wellness company to provide um, products and services and hopefully next year education on natural remedies. I would love to get a chance to work with organizations such as universities and or FDA down the road to support a clinical trial so we can, we can find out scientifically what the impacts are and have uh, essential oils and ar aromatherapy become a regulated field. Until then, we um, are going to stay under the umbrella of cosmetics. Again, we don't make any uh, promises nor claims. Um, and then people ask me about the name, why blue flower? And when I looked up the meaning of blue flower, I just became extremely fascinated with it. Uh, it symbolizes beauty, hope, um, and inspiration. And it stands for desire, love, and metaphysical striving for the infinite and unreach unreachable. And isn't that what all of us, each and every day, try to do? Going back to our products, we have been on a search, and um, I have received, um, I'm working with advisors, world-renowned aromatherapists, suppliers from all over the world to ensure that we bring the best of the best to our clients. Um, we, we guarantee and we have appropriate certifications for all of our products, and the country of origin is also listed for every single product, essential oil that we sell on our website. And that's our stamp of approval. We just had a soft launch um, less than two weeks ago. And this is our second conference. Uh, many thanks to uh, my, my friends and family who helped it, Donna, Carla, and um, a, a lot of other folks that have just been supporting this endeavor. And um, we, we did talk about the, the, the wellness products and what we want to bring to the table. Uh, we want to talk about um, the fact that education is key. A, a lot of times, essential oils are being handed down and recipes are being given to um, each of us from neighbor next door. That is definitely something that we don't advocate. Um, we are working with... Uh, medical professionals and clinicians in order to be able to um, substantiate the claims that we make. We don't recommend, although uh, it can be, we don't recommend you ingesting essential oils on your own. As I said, I personally am very much looking forward to working with FDA and academic organizations to um, uh, regulate this field, uh, because I have personally seen the benefits. Uh, we have become, a, a, the culture of modern medicine in the last 200 years has uh, broken us away from any natural remedies. We really, and I don't think I'm, I'm alone thinking that, you know, cupping and aromatherapy or any other, uh, or any other remedies um, that have been around for centuries are antiquated. Um, I think what has happened is that, um, it's always been easier to pop a pill. It still is. I mean, most of the time, I smell like wood, according to my kids. <laughs> and, but I don't care anymore. Um, just because I have seen the benefit of it. My, um, my goal is to be, become an advocate for integrative medicine, where, uh, where we can take advantage of the luxury of modern medicine, who we all love and adore. And it has impacted my uh, myself, my kids, and my family. I have, my dear aunt is here today. She just had 32 malignant tumors removed from her liver about less than a month ago. So give her a big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and uh, the fact that she's here today supporting me it means a lot to me. Um, and that's modern medicine. But we also hear about um, abuse and, and overprescribing of antibiotics and painkillers. Um, so I think an integrative approach. I think Mount Sinai has already in, um, in Manhattan, they have already started uh, a center for health supporting an integrative medicine approach. I appreciate Georgetown University's focus on wellness. I know GW and University of Maryland have also started as well. So in, this, in my path, and um, launching this brand new business, I'm hoping that I can also serve as an advocate for integrative medicine and also bringing more regulation and more attention to this field. Um, I already talked about this, the fact that um, what we say and claim on our website is minimal just because uh, we don't have we meaning the field does not have the support of FDA at this moment. Hopefully this will change, but until then, if you like the smell of eucalyptus, try it just because you like it. And I would be remiss um, not to end my presentation with a quote from Rumi, which I believe um, is in, as part of my um, total wellness, I've become, my, I have gotten myself reacquainted to all that is Zen, mindfulness, and also Rumi, one of my favorite uh, poems, who happens to be Persian, again. Um, so it says that you're not a drop in the ocean, you are the entire ocean in a, drive, a drop. And to me, um, some of my essential oils represent that as well. I appreciate you asking me to be here. Um, I'll be available to answer any questions. Feel free to go to our website, and if you, um, have any questions, just go ahead and to the contact field and you'll get to me. Thank you so much.